Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! Doll customizing looks fun, but it's such an expensive hobby to get into, right? Wrong! While it's true that expenses can stack up quickly if you invest in a lot of materials right off the bat, it doesn't have to be that way. As with any hobby or project, creativity is the most valuable tool in your tool bag. If there's a will, there's a way. Let's get started! First up, you need a doll, of course. Your mind might turn to dollar store dolls or something super cheap like that, but I'd advise you to look around thrift stores, garage sales, or eBay to find much higher quality dolls for cheap. If you're going to pour love and effort onto a project, do it on something worth your time. That's just my opinion, of course. If you're into Barbie, you'll have no problem finding her. She's practically a dime a dozen at thrift stores. If you're looking for other brands, keep an eye out, they do pop up. My fellow YouTuber pal Dollastic has great luck finding all sorts of hidden treasures at her thrift stores. I almost exclusively work with Monster High because I love their great articulation and beautiful sculpted face molds. Their detachable arms mean they get lost quite easily though, as is the case with this Laguna here. Although don't let that stop you, you could always make a prosthetic limb. I found a beautiful Claudine Wolf doll with all of her limbs at Grace for $4. I was hoping to find one even cheaper, but there it is. This is exactly the kind of thing you're looking for to make a custom on a budget. I actually left her for some other lucky person because I have plenty of stock dolls to work with, but I wanted to show that it can be done. If you're seriously thinking about getting into this, look for used doll lots on eBay. That's how I stocked up on nearly all of my fodder. I forget the exact numbers, but I bought about 20 dolls for around 80, which boiled down to 3 bucks a doll. It was a great deal. Let's move on to art supplies. If you want to give your doll new hair, yarn is fairly cheap and makes great doll hair in many ways. One skein is more than enough and will see you through many a project. Costume wig hair is also an option. You can usually find both natural and bright artificial colors for cheap. But be warned, it's likely this hair cannot be boil washed. If you live in America, look for great post-Halloween sales on costume wigs to get some really good deals. And of course, there is an obvious source of free hair you could turn to. What, did you really think I was going to cut my hair off for a doll project? Nah, I'm going to cut my husband's. If you know someone who's a good sport, you can nab hair for your doll that way. I actually used his hair before on his custom doll. Technically making this a voodoo doll? Um, let's move on. Glue will play a huge role in budget customizing, so pick yourself up a bottle of Elmer's or something likewise. This little guy is only $2.50. Scissors are also super useful, so get a pair if you don't already have one. These were about 2 bucks. Lastly, we'll need paints. I'm back in Korea now, so sorry about the sudden change with the currencies. I went to Daiso, which is basically Asia's dollar store and found a generous acrylic set for Samcheon won, which is about $3. Also, around the corner at the hardware shop is where I got this little bottle of acetone for only $1. Okay, I've been jabbering on about different materials and what you could potentially use, so before we continue, let's reel it back in and look at the bare necessities for this project. They are a doll, a pair of scissors, a little acetone, acrylic paints, and glue. That's it! The total cost of these materials was about 13 US dollars. Assuming you already have scissors, glue, and maybe nail polish remover, this price could be much lower. The rest of the supplies are all old or ruined clothes, things out of the trash or recycle bin, and stuff I literally picked up off the ground outside. It doesn't get much thriftier than that. It goes without saying, but be sure to wash anything you find on the ground like feathers and whatnot, to be safe. Now we can finally get cracking on our budget custom doll! Taking our acetone, I wet a restaurant napkin, place it over the eyes for a couple seconds, and then twist away. I decided to leave her lip color on because I thought it was really pretty already. I hope that's cool with you guys. Next, I'm going to work with the hair. I showed you a variety of sources you could attain cheap hair from, but for this project, I'll be using her original hair. I cut the scraggly tinsel at the root with my thread scissors. She looks much cleaner already. I want this character to have horns because everything is cooler with animal horns, darn it. So to achieve this, 
I use street food skewers to stab holes into the vinyl about where the horns will be. With the holes made, I insert one of the skewers completely across like this. Part the hair out of the way and temporarily tie it back with twist ties. I gently break the wooden stick in multiple places to create the shape of sheep horns. Rip up a couple napkins to act as the meat of the sculpture, then apply glue and start wrapping. It's a little flimsy at first, but it will harden and become stronger as the glue reconnects the broken stick inside. My skewer wasn't long enough on the other side, so I extended it with a twist tie. After a couple more layers of napkins to pad out the shape, we're ready for the final layer. Using thin strips of ripped paper from a shopping bag, I apply more glue and circle the horns again. This paper is thicker and stronger, so it creates a good final casting to our horns. The ribbed effect of the paper strip looks just like real horn ridges too, doesn't it? I add generous blobs at the base to ensure they're connected to her head and let everything dry overnight. They look awesome if I do say so myself. You'd never guess that they were made out of trash. Her face up is next, but I only bought the paints, not the brushes. Not to fear, let's make our own. I found some thin sticks outside and cut them to size with my scissors. Stick some hair on with glue and wrap the ends to keep things tidy. I've never made my own brushes before, so this was a fun little experiment. I made one from my cat's hair, one from the doll's hair, one from my husband's hair, and one from a bird's feather. We'll see how they fare. Tuck her hair back out of the way and get out your paints. Now this set I found was quite generous, but let's say you couldn't get this many colors. If you're really tight on options, the bare minimum you need are red, blue, yellow, and white. In other words, the primaries. You can mix any color with these three, and white is always handy. I will only use these colors for my doll. Wipe the face down with water for a clean slate, and begin. Because this is acrylics only, I'm going to tackle the face a little differently than usual, starting with watered down white to form the base of the eyes. I'm using my husband hairbrush here, and it's going fairly well. It took three layers to become opaque. I mix up an orange and lay the color on top of the white to create her irises. I want a deep brown for her eyebrows and lashes, so I mix all my primaries together. This part's hard enough in pencils, but I gave it my best shot. Flipping the doll upside down to get a better angle on things is a useful trick. The eyebrow shapes came out surprisingly even. I switched to the feather brush for the thinnest lines, like the eye lines. All these brushes felt awkward to handle at first, but I warmed up to them. Taking reds and browns, I shade the upper part of the iris and dab on a pupil. I found the feather brush to be the sharpest and finest for details, so I tried to clean up and straighten out the eyebrows in the winged eyeliner. I tried for soft gradients around her eye and cheeks, but with minimal success. I would have liked to have more eyeshadow and soft blushes, but it wasn't really working out. Keep water and a napkin nearby to remove any mistakes if you change your mind. I had several goes at her eyelashes before I was satisfied. 
Add reds and pinks to the tear duct and some streaks of white highlights. I dab on yellow for the iris's highlight color, then seal the deal with an eye shine. For a parted lips look, I dab white into the center of her lips. This always reminds me of the classic Bratz lips. So yeah, taking a close look here, considering the tools we used, I'm pretty proud of this. After painting the other eye, of course, I added a few last design elements. And there we go, a no sealant acrylic only with homemade brushes face up. Not bad. Let's fancify her horns with some stripes and whatnot. I noticed the glue dries shiny and clear, so let's pop some on her eyes and hope that works out. Time for clothes. As briefly shown earlier, these are my own used clothes, family members' old clothes. You really don't have to look far to find unwanted garments ripe for the harvesting. This is a knit shirt I've had for years. I cut a strip off the bottom. The fact that it's old and worn actually plays into doll form quite nicely. It drapes and looks convincing on a smaller scale. Hmm, what are we going to make for you? I ended up cutting out two triangular shapes with a dip for the neckline, and two shapes like this for the sleeves. I just eyeballed everything with no pattern. There's plenty of no-sew or glue-only ways of making clothes out there, but just because you're on a budget doesn't mean you have to sacrifice quality. For me, it's sewn clothes or nothing at all. So, using my scissors, I sharpen the tip of the toothpick until it's practically a splinter. I carefully unpick another garment around the hem so I can steal its thread. Then, I glue the thread to my splinter, creating this crude sewing needle. First, stitch the shoulder seams. Next, attach the shoulders, making sure the right sides are facing each other. Sew the side seam. Because this is knit fabric, we don't have to finish the edge, which is a plus. And turn it inside out to see our finished shirt. I take a gathered stitch around the neckline so we can tighten the fit once it's on the doll. Tie some thread or twine around the wrists for a ruffled bunched sleeve. To finish the dress, I want to add a whole cacophony of textures and ruffles to the bottom hem. I used pink chiffon, ribbon off some packaging, worn pantyhose, anything I had on hand that matches the color scheme. Halfway through, I was pretty fed up with my splinter needle. It worked okay for some fabric, but it was constantly getting stuck in tearing finer fabrics like the pantyhose. I decided to try using a paper clip for needle instead, and it did a much cleaner job. Although because metal is slipperier, the thread and glue wanted to pop off more frequently. Instead of hemming, I kept all the edges raw for that handmade look. Well, all my dolls are handmade, but you know the kind of aesthetic I'm talking about, right? That eclectic, raw materials sort of feeling? Taking more of that paper bag, twine, and glue, I fashioned two chunky statement necklaces. Some color might look nice. Wish I had painted it before I tied it on. The neckline still needs some more love. How about a twine bow? We'll work more on it later. I also used the paper bag for buttons. Cut out a circle, punch two holes, and stitch them to her dress. Adorbs. 
This paper bag really turned out to be the VIP in this project because we're not done with it yet. I cut out two big circle shapes and one long rectangle. I make small cuts all the way around each circle and bend the edges inward to make tabs like this. Dab glue on the tabs all the way around and lay down the rectangle shape as you go. I stopped short at the top and folded the extra tabs down on the inside. Repeat the process for the other circle and, you guessed it, it's her bag! Fold a paper clip into appropriate shapes, then glue them inside of paper straps. Glue the straps to the inside of the bag. I used one more thin strip of paper to create the bag handle and formed a decorative pocket for the front. Cute! Cut out shapes that roughly look like this to make some shoes. Fold the shapes over the foot and glue the tabs together. I folded the excess under her foot and glued on a shoe sole shape. I stab holes down the paper with a toothpick and my scissors to prepare them for laces. For the shoelaces, I found this bit of material that is from a shopping bag handle. I cut the ends and unraveled it to recover some of these beautiful maroon threads. Cut two tapered trapezoid shapes, fold them over like this, and mush them onto the bottom to be heels. I played it by ear as I went, so they turned out a little funky, but they fit for the most part and look really cute. I'm very pleased with her so far. The last thing I want to do is work with her hair. Like the rest of the doll, I want her hair to sport a variety of textures and colors to match. I begin by braiding hair in a way so that it lays across her head to hide the horn's base. This part was difficult to do on camera because she wanted to slide off the table as I pulled her hair into braids, so I ended up doing most of it off camera. For authenticity, I didn't use a doll stand for any part of this project. I had her pinched between my knees for most of the hair braiding. As well as braiding various fabrics and threads into her hair, I also glued some strings and fabrics directly to her head for more volume and interesting texture. I tied all the ends with salvaged threads or twist ties. I also glued two feathers behind her left horn. And with that, she's done! When you're on a budget, you have to be flexible and see where the project takes you. Depending on what materials you find or come across will dictate your doll's outcome. Beggars can't be choosers, right? Since I had a lot of earth tones and reds, I formed the doll's appearance around that. If we pretend this is my first custom and say I'd like to earn money to buy better materials, you could sell your custom online. A lot of things factor into pricing your work, but seeing as I gave her a new face, sort of new hair, and a full outfit including a bag, I might theoretically sell this doll for around $70. The teeth illusion only works from the front. As soon as you look at her from the side, they appear more like buck teeth. But somehow they work with the sheep horns and ended up looking appropriate. I don't know, I kind of like it.
If you are interested in doll customizing as a hobby, but don't have much cash to spare, try budget customizing first, and invest in however much you're comfortable with. Whether you're tight on cash or not, sourcing your materials in a thrifty way is always a good idea. You can repurpose all sorts of things to be cute or useful. You save money and keep junk out of the landfill. Everybody wins! I had no idea what to name her, so I turned to Twitter. You guys came up with some truly unique and puntastic names, and I love so many of them it was hard to choose. Thank you everyone for the suggestions. I think we'll go with Thea Thriftford. It suits her, and I'm a sucker for alliteration. I highly advise watching my videos for beginners, which covers materials and costs, selecting and preparing the doll, and a step-by-step -step guide to drawing the face. I made a playlist for you and everything, so give it a watch! Feel free to like and subscribe for more customizing goodness, and I'll see you in my next video! Stay artsy! Annyeong!